Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the new, hear the echo, it's so new, it's echoing, Clay Share Studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. Tonight, we're gonna be talking all about luster. Now, over the next few weeks, you're gonna be seeing on the live broadcast, a lot of changes happening. And behind me, we're just starting, because this is the second broadcast we've ever done from the new studio space. Monday morning, we had our first Good Morning Clay Share for our premium members, and that was really fun. Those of you who caught that broadcast will notice quite a change since then. We've got most of the set done for the furniture, and now we're gonna be working on the rest of what goes on the wall, and of course, our Clay Share sign needs to come on over and be installed too. Also, the rest of the building needs to be finished. The interior isn't quite done, but we do have this front section finished. So uh, kilns are coming over. We got one kiln installed and two wheels over here. We need to bring in more equipment. And so we'll be doing that slowly over the next few weeks to month, and you'll get to see all those changes happen. But it's really exciting to be in the new building. And I'm really excited that Luster is the first thing we're gonna be talking about with our first demo that we're doing here in the new studio. So uh, this whole month we've been featuring Mako because May for Mako and Mako has some really great lusters and if you've never tried luster before you've been a little afraid to give it a go well I'm gonna help alleviate all those fears for you and walk you through some luster Q&A session and a quick tutorial. Now I do have a full length class on ClayShare.com or if you download the ClayShare app that you can watch over and over as many times as you want. It talks all about Luster. I also have a few other demos we've done over the years with Luster so you can check those out as well. So I hope everybody is doing well this beautiful Wednesday, the last day of May. Happy new studio day. Thank you, Susan. I have to move the sign you made me. Susan made us this amazing clay share sign a few years ago. It's going to go right here in the window, but I have to go get some more hardware for hanging it because the window is longer uh, than, well, taller than where it used to hang. So I got to get some more chains for it. But uh, we also will be changing the lighting a bit. You know, this, the lighting that we currently have that we're, you're seeing right now, every studio space we've been in and we've had different lighting and you have different lighting needs. This space is cavernous, it's huge. So I, there's a lot more space behind me too. So it's a little darker. So we gotta get some more lighting, we'll be working on that, but we didn't know how it was gonna look until we did a broadcast here. So this is, this is how it's gonna go. And I'm really excited for it. And I think you guys are gonna love it too. All right, let's talk about luster. So what is luster? Luster is a micro fine layer that goes on your pottery, is fired again, and then you get these beautiful finishes, whether it's gold, white gold, mother of pearl, sometimes they call white gold platinum. Some places will sell lusters in all kinds of colors. Those of you who can get Saradel in Europe, Saradel has a ton of lusters available, so you're very lucky. But here uh, we are limited a bit with our lusters. So you put it on your glaze fired pot. So it's in pot that's already been fired. Something like say this one right here. So we'll go up nice and close. We'll go on a camera too. So this pot right here is uh, already fired. Doesn't matter what temperature you glaze fired it to, but it needs to be a fired pot. And then you can apply your luster to this and then you fire it again. Now, once you've done that, if you do mother of pearl, you get something like this. Look how shiny that is. If you do gold, and this is mother of pearl and gold. So mother of pearl on the body and then gold on the rim. And I got a little carried away, but that's okay. That's what luster is all about. Some other gold is on this one. So I applied the luster and then once it was on, I fired the piece again for a third time. So we have our bisque firing, we have our glaze firing, and then you have your luster firing. So that's a three firing process. Once it's fired on, it's gonna stay. Now, of course, if you took sandpaper or if you scrub it really, really hard, you could damage the surface because it's a micro thin layer of gold. Now, Mako's lusters are food safe, so you don't have to worry if you're using theirs. Other companies you should check into to make sure they're food safe. So you can put it on foodware and not worry about drinking out of a cup that has gold luster on it. Now, this is actual gold. 
that is embedded and in a, um, ooh, I got a little fuzzy on me. So it's in a uh, solution. And then when you brush it on and you fire it, everything else burns away except for the gold. So it's the same thing. You need a carrier to get that metal on it. Now the mother of pearl luster is a little different. It's a different substance than the golds, but it works the exact same way. And it gives us a really lustrous finish to it. Now you saw, oh wait, I want to show you. So whatever you put mother of pearl on, it's going to pearlize it, but you'll still see the colors through it. So this was carved. And then after it was bisque fired, I added my color and then I put clear glaze on top. So the color was done with colors for earth. And then I put a clear glaze on top. And then after I glaze fired it, I put mother of pearl on top. So every color is still there, but now it's pearly. So you can turn any color into a iridescent color if you would like to. What happens if you put it on a dark color? I don't know if we'll be able to get this to look as amazing as it really is, but it looks like kind of like oil does on water. I don't know if the light is too harsh in here. It really blasts it out. Maybe, maybe if I come in, we'll see if we can get it. You can almost see it over in here. The light is very harsh, but you get it, right? When you put it on a dark color. So this is mother of pearl luster. And then after I fired it with mother of pearl luster, I put a decal on it and I did gold on the rim and I fired it again for a fourth time. So Maryland China Company has some colored lusters. I, I think maybe you told me that before, Susan. Yes. So there are a few sources. Check them out. A great way to use luster if you're just starting out is just to do your rims. You know, take a little trinket dish like this and I just put a little bit of gold on the rim all the way around and that's it. That's a great place to start because luster can be daunting to use. Another great way to use it to start with is what I did here. So on this little scraffito plate, these dots here, these little dots, they're gold dots. So I went back in and I put gold dots on just to add a little something to it. There you go. I know it's hard to see unless I give you the glare, but I've got little gold dots. I didn't do the rim, just in the center, but it's a nice way to try it out. Here's another one I did, same thing, gold dots. So I used the glaze, I fired it after it was fired. I used gold under overglaze, sorry, gold overglaze decals. These are from Sandbow. It's a, it's a bird, it's very cute. So I applied the decal and then I just did dots all the way around and bees. I used bee decals and gold on the rim. And so I just applied all that and fired it for a third time. So when we're using lusters, here's another one, gold on the rim only. That's it. Oh, I did a few dots here. Yeah, just a few. So your newbie potter, thanks for the video. When you fire for luster, does the low temp firing continue to shrink the clay? No, your firing is finished. Your shrinking is finished. It will not shrink again. But what does happen to it? Well, you're firing it again. So you're bringing it up to a hot temp and then cooling it again. So it's having a thermal uh, exposure, right? Thermal expansion and contraction is happening. So your pieces could become more brittle and there is the potential for them to crack. I want to show you when the light hits this. This is mother of pearl. Do you see the uh, iridescence that's happening in here? That's what I was trying to show you on darker colors. You get that iridescent quality. Now this has mother of pearl on it and gold on the rim. So a little bit of both happening. And mother of pearl is a thing that's hard to capture on camera, but in person, it's amazing. So can you fire the mother of pearl and the gold in one third firing? You can, but, and it's a, it's a big but. When you put the mother of pearl on, you're going to put that on first, and then you're going to put your gold on and you don't want the mother of pearl, which is on the flat part of the plate and the edge, which is gold to touch. Because what happens is you get this really kind of, a dark kind of um, crunchy, rough looking thing that can happen. So you don't want them to touch each other if they're wet, but if you did mother of pearl on the entire plate first, then gold on the edge, you don't have to worry about the overlapping. 
So, but if you want to do it in one firing, like say you did this, uh, and you want to do mother of pearl on the entire thing and just gold on the rim, you could do that. Just make sure there's no mother of pearl on your rim to do it in one firing. If you want to do it in another firing, you can. So you have an E23T. This is a good reason to get one of the baby doll kilns. It can be unless you're going to do a lot of pieces in, in one firing and one, save up all your pieces. So what I do is when something comes out of a, of a firing, like the piece that I have here, I know I want to luster it. I just set it on a shelf. Now, of course, I could put it in the small kiln, and that's another great reason to get one of those small test or doll kilns because you can easily do three or four things, put them in the small kiln, fire them, and be good to go. Or you have to wait till you have enough pieces to go in your bigger kiln. Now, you do not have to pack it as tightly as you normally would if you want to do a luster firing. So say you only have about half the pots to go in a luster firing than you normally would have in a glaze firing. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Just pack them lighter. You know, don't, don't put them so close. Spread them out a little bit more. Still use all the shelves and fill the kiln up, but you don't want to go ahead and just do two shelves at the bottom full of pots and nothing in the top half of your kiln, right? You want to just space them out if, if you need to, unless you have a whole bunch of pots. Okay, so let's talk a bit about safety. Uh, luster is a volatile organic compound, kind of like breathing paint fumes, and it's something you don't really want to do without protection. So first of all, you want to be working in a well-ventilated area. So that could be in a space that's large enough that can absorb the fumes, or ideally you'll have some sort of air cleaner in your space, like I have my EnviroCleanse air purifier that will run and that'll catch all of the fumes. You could also just open windows or doors so you have a nice cross breeze, or you could do this outside and that would work fine too. But you wanna make sure you're not in a small enclosed space and breathing these fumes. So you wanna do that for one. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna wear a half mask respirator that's rated for volatile organic compounds or VOCs. Now we wear these masks that are rated for silica a lot when we are doing a sanding, when you're making clay or making glazes because you don't wanna breathe in those silica or clay particles. But luster is different. Think of it as uh, more like painting with, if you ever did any, um, like if you made models and used model airplane paints, those testers paints they were called, I believe is the company. So if you do any of that, you would have had a mask like this. So this is what you want. Mine is made by a company called 3M and you can get any company you want. It's called a half mask respirator because as you can see, it covers half my face instead of full face. So you don't need a full face respirator. Now you might be able to find a disposable version of this, which is just a little mask that you can pop on if you're not gonna do a lot of luster and you just wanna protect yourself for one or two times. But I do a fair amount of lusters, so for me it was worth it investing in getting a really good mask that's gonna protect me. Now, these cartridges, when you're buying them, you make sure you get one that's rated for volatile organic compounds. In fact, the one that I have here on my 3M mask, this one, and if we go to the close-up, I can, I can show you a little better. This one here is rated not only for volatile organic compounds, but it's rated for silica. So I actually only need this one. You don't need two separate masks. I can wear this when I'm mixing clay and glaze or sanding anything or doing anything that's gonna get any clay dust in the air. I can also use it when I'm doing my lusters. So it's a really great multi-purpose mask. And when you are buying these, you'll see the mask is available by itself. And then you buy the cartridges separately. So you can choose what you want the cartridges for. And if you just look, you'll find that there's these combination ones. So just look through them. The P100, I believe, is the one for the silica. Um, this one here, uh, I don't know the number on it, but you'll have to just look. Any place that sells these half mask respirators, Granger Supply sells them, Amazon has them. You can find them all over the place. And you might decide you want to get one that's separate for volatile organic compounds, separate from the silica. It's up to, it's up to you. 
which one you get. All right, so when you're working, you want to wear this because you want to protect yourself. And, and uh, you know, if others are around you and they're going to be doing lusters, they need to have a mask too. How many pieces would I guess I could luster the edge with with one bottle? Oh, probably about 10 or 15 easily. So let's, let's do you want to talk about the little tiny bottles? We'll come over here. So luster can be kind of expensive. It depends on where you buy it for the price. Now the golds and the platinum or the white golds, they come in these teeny tiny little bottles. Look how tiny they are. And this is bright gold. What is this one? This one is also bright gold. And then we have premium gold. So premium gold can cost twice what bright gold it costs. Premium gold's a little less brassy, more yellow. So when you're putting luster on, this one's a premium gold here on this. You get this much yellowier. This one's premium gold. It's premium. So it's extra fancy. This one that I used here is premium. So you'll see some that are a little brassier. That's just bright gold. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just put next to each other. You will notice a difference. If you're just starting out, I would recommend save yourself some money and get yourself the bright gold, not the premium gold, unless you're getting a great deal on the premium gold. Now, other ones we have, which are this one, which is called white gold, which will look like a silver or a platinum color. Also comes in these teeny tiny bottles. I think these are two, yeah, these are two grams in here. Now, when you're buying the mother of pearl luster, you get a half ounce bottle. So mother of pearl luster is really affordable when we're talking about lusters. So if you're gonna buy one to try a luster, maybe you get a mother of pearl, and then a bright gold to start with. You get those two. If you can only afford one, try, try the mother of pearl. I love it. It's, I cannot live without mother of pearl. It's my favorite. I love to put it on all kinds of things and it looks great on everything. Um, here's a bigger bottle. You can get bright gold in larger bottles, but they will cost more. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing them, when you're getting the little guy, you know, of course you're getting less, so. It'll, it'll be a little more affordable. What else we got over here? All right, so when you're buying your luster, you wanna think about some things. Well, you got your luster and you're gonna have to clean your brushes. So you're gonna have to get this thing called essence. Now in my class, I do use lavender oil and you certainly can use lavender oil if you want to, but when you're buying your luster, buy a bottle of essence for every luster and while you're buying and you're shopping, if you get your, you get your essence, this one is for white gold. So here's my white gold. So you get your gold, you get your essence, and then you're gonna get a brush. And these will never cross contaminate with any other essence. You will never use the brush for white gold in any other luster. You will only ever clean it in the essence that's for white gold. And how do we know it's for white gold? Well, when you get your bottle home, you are gonna write white gold on the bottle. When you get your brush home, you're gonna write, I just have WG, WG at the back, white gold. So you do not wanna cross contaminate because you'll get weird color mixings. Your gold won't turn out gold. Your, your white gold might not turn out white gold. Your mother of pearl will no longer just be beautiful pearly essence. It could have some weird purple streaking to it and do all kinds of things that you don't want it to do. So if you're gonna do lusters, your shopping list will include not only the luster, the essence right here and a brush for every luster you buy. So just make sure you do that so that when you actually get your luster in your hand and you're ready to use it, you can actually use it because these, you do not clean your brushes off with water. It will, it doesn't, no, you're not gonna wanna do it. You could get turpentine, but honestly, it's formulated to work with these essences. So get your essence so you can clean your brush. Uh, I do use lavender oil that will also clean your brush and thin your luster, but you know, not everybody wants to get lavender oil. So it's your call. You decide what you want in your studio. How many pieces would I guess? Let's see if we got anything else. Oh, five inch wide bowls. Um, yeah, I would say a five inch bowl. You're looking at about, yeah, 15 pieces probably. We'll see, maybe 10, depends. All right, uh, other things to think about when you're gonna be lustering, 
you know, you don't want to get luster on your hands. If it happens once or twice, that's fine. But over time, you don't really want to get it on your skin. So gloves are nice. These are little nitrile gloves that I have. Prepping your surface, you'll need a couple other things. I use rubbing alcohol, whatever kind you like. This happens to be 91%, just because that's all I could find at the store. You do not need 91%. Uh, and then paper towels. Um, you know, Viva paper towels are great because they don't leave lint on things. So if you're looking for a paper towel that you can get for your studio that will allow you to clean your surfaces, try Viva, V-I-V-A paper towels. Now someone else might have another paper towel that they've been using that works great for them. And if that's the case, use that. So could I make a, um, I don't think I, uh, Christine, probably not. This is a, this is a part of, this is a, I don't know if I've told the story, but it's a kind of, it's very close to my heart. So I don't think I'm going to do that, but we'll see. I never say never. You never know. All right, let's prep our, our pot. So we have this one. This is the one I've chosen that we're going to do right here. And it's been through the glaze fire. Now it was fired with Mako glazes and my buttercup. So this yellow right here is the buttercup. On camera too? Okay, because I'm looking at the screen and I don't see it. Because I was holding this. Ah, so uh, just stay on too. All right, so this is buttercup mycelodon and I apply that to about here. And then this is the new amaryllis from Mako, and I applied that. And then on the top, I used Mako Light Flux. So that's what's happening here. Now, looking at what you're going to put luster on, you have to decide what luster you want to do. Why are you putting luster on this piece? I mean, the side's amazing. I think it's gorgeous. What would happen if we put luster on this? I, I have no idea. Could it get better? Maybe. Let's find out. So you've got your piece, you wanna prep it. And to do that, you just wanna clean it because you've handled it and any oils or dirt from your fingers have been transferred onto the pot. So you just wanna go ahead and take your rubbing alcohol and your paper towel. And then you just clean the areas that you're gonna put the luster on. You also want to clean the interior a bit too because those oils can affect how that glaze reacts even though you're doing another firing. All right, I'll clean this off. Here, how clean it is. Squeaky. All right, that's clean. And then you pick what you're going to do. So for this one here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do mother of pearl on the entire piece. And then I think I'll do gold luster on the rim because we were just talking about that, right? We were just talking about how that could look. So let's find our mother of pearl. There's the mother of pearl. Let me make sure I have my mother of pearl essence. Oh, I have two, do I have two bottles of mother of pearl? That happened. This is my bright gold essence. This is my mop. So whenever anybody asks me about mother of pearl and I have to write back, you'll see mop. I always write mop. Mop means mother of pearl. In case anybody is wondering. And then you have your mother of pearl. You have your essence. I'm gonna be putting my mask on so my voice might be muffled. So you'll have to uh, excuse me if you can't hear me clearly. If I try yelling with these masks on, um, I get out of breath and then like, I almost faint. So we're, I'm gonna try not to yell too much, but we'll see how the sound is. And I'm gonna try not to bump my mic putting it on. So hold on a minute, everybody. It could be, it could be a little noisy. I am bumping my mic, sorry. All right. How's the sound? Can you hear me? <laughs> this is when you can pretend to be Darth Vader, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, well, grab a brush. Now, remember, I said when you get brushes, and you can get really nice brushes. If you're doing a lot of very fine gold work, 
You might want to get a really nice sable brush. This one right here is a really nice one. But for Mother of Pearl, what I do is I really beat up the brush a lot. So I get these really inexpensive craft brushes. And I'm just going to write on the brush somewhere M O P. So I wrote that on the handle. Right there, M O P. You could also take a bit of tape and put tape on the end and write M O P on that and make a little flag, like a tape flag. All right, go first into your essence and get your brush wet. And then you're just going to go right into your mother of pearl. Ready? And just swirl it all over. And you want to apply it in a swirly pattern because that's what helps create that uh, swirly iridescent oil slick look that we get. A little too thick, so I'm going to thin it down right in here just by going over it again. Okay. So now we're going to take our essence, clean our brush, just swirl it around in there, pull it up the side, and then just gently squeeze the brush. That's it. It's done. So the mother of pearl is on. And if you want to put another color on, so say we want to do the gold on the rim. And I didn't grab Q-tips, but you could always keep Q-tips around. So if you ever got a bit where you didn't want it, you could use your Q-tip to clean it off. But I'm going to take the paper towel. Put a little more rubbing alcohol on it and I'm just going to clean that edge removing the mother of pearl from the edge because we want to put gold on here okay so I'm going to use uh, bright gold I'm not going to use fancy premium gold I'm just going to use bright gold so the bright gold is the one that is a little brassier, but I guarantee you won't really be able to tell the difference. Let's see what I got over here. There's a bottle with some bright gold in it. Oh, why don't I wear gloves? You should wear gloves. Nitrile gloves, Frankie. Absolutely. And I did say you should have gloves and wear them, but did I put them on? No. Mostly because these aren't my gloves. They're Kevin's because I ran out of gloves and they fit a little big. But yes, you should wear gloves when you're doing it. Like I did mention, if you caught the beginning, you would have heard me say. So this is a case of do as I say, not as I do, right? So wear yourself your gloves, people. Thank you. Uh, and uh, those of you who missed the beginning where I said wear gloves, go back and watch the replay and you'll see. I said wear gloves. Okay. I got my bright gold. I've got a brush for bright gold. Again, you write Make a little flag or write on the handle BG. That's all I put on it for bright gold. Now, if you do this and you think you're not going to get any on your hands, you don't have to wear the gloves, but I can guarantee you're going to get some on you. So, although I didn't get any on me, that doesn't mean I won't now. All right, going into my gold. So I dip it in. And then I just brush off a little bit on the edge. If your gold is really gummy, you might just want to put a tiny, like half a drop of essence in your gold to thin it down. And that can happen over time. You know, they can gum up. All right, so 
We're going to put our bottle down. And we're going to do the edge. And I'm going to show you how I do it really easily. I just take the side of the brush and you just brush it on. And you're going to see right there that little brown. Now, sometimes your gold and premium gold is red when you brush it on. If you don't put enough gold on and you fire your piece, you will have purple smudges instead of gold. So if you've ever fired it and your piece came out of the kiln and it wasn't gold, it was just smudgy purple, it wasn't too heavy. Same if you go too heavy and it ends up very dull and gritty looking surface, that can be because you put too much on. So this really looks like it's enough. If I wanted to take it over the edge a little bit more, and I did have to take my mask off because I cannot speak and do this with my mask on. So I will only do this one piece with the luster because safety wise, you can get away with it once, but, but don't do it more than once. It's just not good for you. Now, if you wanted to get really uh, fancy looking, you can do like I did in here, where I actually drip the gold down in. And to do that, I'll show you on this. You take your gold, you come onto your piece, and you just roll your brush in one area, and you make a little bead. I'll show you on this side too. And what will happen is, as it sits, that bead will slowly drip down. This would not get you 15 bowls. You would, um, <laughs> you would only do like three or four if you did this. But it could be fun, right? It's a fun drippy look. If you're into the drippy gold look, this could be a fun thing to do. You can go and make you can actually encourage it a little bit and kind of do a wiggly interior. See, I'm just letting it wiggle a bit. So you don't have to get held up on really straight lines. The other thing with gold is if you want to wax your piece first where you don't want the gold to be or use tape as a resist, you could do that as well. So as it sits, you'll see it's dripping and it'll drip more. So if you're going to do pieces with gold, you have to consider the costs of gold. And when you're selling your work, you have to price it accordingly, right? Because gold's not, it's not inexpensive. So you're going to have to make sure that the pieces that have gold on it they're going to be priced more than the pieces that don't have gold. A couple reasons. One is the material cost. Two is the time, right? You're spending all this extra time doing all this work and you fire it again. So your kiln has wear and tear on it. So there's a lot happening. All right, put the top on. Um, a great little tip for not spilling your luster is have a little wad of clay sitting out and you can just press it down in that wad of clay because I have knocked this little vial over before and it's a very sad, sad thing. Now you can make a permanent holder for it where you press this in the clay and wiggle it a little bit to give you a little more room. Bisque fire it and now you've got a permanent little holder and you could actually make one, um, you know, make a couple of them so that you have them for all different sizes and everything. So now that you're done using your gold, you're gonna clean your brush, just swirl it around, just like that. And then squeeze off. Do you see how some of the residue's coming off? If you had a lot in your brush, you might have to swirl it around again. And then you're good to go. And so you can store these, you know, I usually keep them standing up in a cup. I like to let everything dry flat. And once it's dry, stand that up. And that's to prevent any of the essence or liquid. And this would be true with any brush at all, any water from cleaning it. In this case, we have essence running down into the ferrule and it will loosen the glue that holds the ferrule on and also it can loosen the glue that helps hold the bristles in. So for longevity of your brushes, you're gonna want to let them dry flat. 
Best way would be if you could hang it upside down. Not everybody has that luxury, so at least have them lay flat. And then once they're dry, you can stand them back up. All right, now I had some other things I wanted to share with you all. Let's see what we got for questions while we're doing it. So K Clayscape's code, pieces of a metallic luster able to go in the microwave. Well, it is metal, right? So uh, should you put them in the microwave? No, you shouldn't. Uh, you can get arcing from your microwave. So I would definitely suggest don't microwave your pieces. Also, don't put them in the dishwasher. The dishwasher detergent is really harsh and that can etch the surface. So your mother of pearl luster over time won't be as lusterous and your gold will become dulled over time. So these are going on pieces that somebody's gonna take good care of and treat them lovingly. You don't just toss them in your dishwasher or throw them in the microwave. Can you use them every day? Absolutely. You just gotta be a little more careful, right? And the fact that a piece that has luster on it, it's a little different than a piece that doesn't. So it's not the, the, the same kind of work. So no, don't put it in your microwave unless you just don't like your microwave. So maybe you need a new one, but you, you could like, I don't know, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> so let's see if we, we got any more questions. Oh yes, yeah, so code for Clayscapes. Um, yes. So Clayscapes is doing, is it 20% off Mako the whole month of May? And today's the last day of May. So if you want to take advantage of that code, the Clayscapes code is M-A-Y-C-O, lowercase, 2023, Mako 2023. And that is a discount off of the Stroken Coats, Designer Liners, Lusters, the new glaze, all the glazes. I've got a bunch of glazes behind me. Um, any Mako underglaze, all the Mako products are included. And today's the last day. I believe it ends at midnight. We've been doing it all month long. So if you've missed out, what you been doing? It's May for Mako. We always do May for Mako. Just like August is always Diamond Core Tools. That's kind of like part of what we do here at Clayshare. Did you not know? Yeah, so August is Diamond Core Tools. May is always Mako with Clayscapes. Um, so we also are going to be giving away two $25 gift certificates to Clayscapes Pottery tonight. Premium members already entered. Everybody else, the way you enter, you go to clayshare.com and you sign up for our emails. That's it. It's super easy. Let's see if we got any more questions on the luster front. Let's see if I forgot anything. Um, I think I covered everything. So once it's done, you put it in the kiln. You can wait for it to dry like an hour and then you put it in the kiln and fire it. And that's, that's basically all I do. So if you don't put enough gold on it, can you refire with more gold? Yes, you can. Yeah. So it's, it will come out smudgy gray purple if you didn't put enough gold on. So you can put another layer of gold on and fire it again. And I've done that before and it works fine. See, use gold and MOP you bought years ago. If your luster is a little thick and gummy, you could just put a drop of the essence in it and that will help thin it. And then you should be able to use it fine. So what cone do I fire to? So that's such a question because I fire, I fire my China paints. I fire my overglaze decals and my lusters all to 018. I know some people fire at different temperatures, but I go to 018. You could go to 017. Some people go to 016. Some people do 022. I just do 018. Uh, I have found everything for me works great at that temperature with all my pieces. So I can have a kiln that has overglazed decals. I can have a kiln that has china paints and a kiln that has lusters all together in one firing and they go at the same time, and I have no problems at 018. Um, the manufacturer will have recommendations on their little bottles, and you can follow that, which I always recommend. Let's see what they say um, for Mako. Does it say, oh, you gotta peel it. We gotta peel the label. So, 
So they fired a 020 is what they do. Uh, 018 is very close to 020. And that was for Mother of Pearl. I wonder what it says on the gold. But you know, there's all these like rules and stuff where it says you have to fire to this. I have been doing lusters for about 15 years and none of the pieces from 15 years ago are having any issues. So I'm just gonna keep going at 018. But if you're doing something different and it works for you, then you do that 019 for the white gold. So that's pretty close to 018. So we're just gonna stick with that. All right. So it works well on terracotta because they really low firing temp and they look more matte on porous terracotta. Right, so let's talk about the finish. So your luster is gonna take, off the, take on the surface quality of whatever you put it on. If you put it on a shiny gloss finish, your gold is gonna be shiny gold. If you put it on a satin finish, your gold is gonna be a satin finished gold. If you put it on a matte finish, which you can do, you're gonna get a gold dry matte color. It really won't glisten much at all. It's gonna be uh, very, very dry looking, but it is still is the luster. So whatever surface you're putting it on is gonna affect how your finished gold or mother of pearl or white gold or whatever you're putting on is gonna look. So keep that in mind when you're working. I really like to use a gloss finished piece or a satin, but really I like gloss the best. It really gives the shine, especially with the mother of pearl, you really get that iridescence coming out. It works on the others, but it doesn't work as well. So it's just, I guess it depends what you're going for, but you can use it across all surfaces, but I think it's best on, on gloss. But that's, of course, my aesthetic. You might like something different. And if so, just use that. All right, where are we at? Oh, Barbara, thank you, thank you. Are Luster's food safe? Uh, so I did talk about it in the beginning, but I'll go over it again happily. I will tell you, check with the lusters manufacturer, the manufacturer of the luster you're using. Mako's lusters are food safe, but not all of them are. So check the packages and read what it says. Some companies, they might put things in it that are not food safe. So we can't say all lusters are food safe. I know some lusters are in fact not, but Mako, their lusters are. So be sure the one that's, um, you're, the one you're using, you read the label and you only use it on foodware if it is in fact food safe. So for, you know, if you have a luster that's not food safe, this is a planter. It's a sweet little tiny succulent planter. It's one of our clay share classes. We've made this together. Um, I went ahead and put it on, on the entire piece and on the rim. It's a planter, doesn't matter if it's food safe or not. This little guy, this is the wide bottom mug. And this is actually a wheel thrown one because we have a wheel thrown wide bottom mug and a hand built wide bottom mug, whichever way you like to make. We got them both for you. But this is a mug and I use the Duncan, well, it's now Mako, Duncan, own, you know. Those of you who've been making pottery, you know, Duncan used to be the one that made the luster and Mako brought them, bought them out. So now it's Mako lusters. Um, this bottle, in fact, says Duncan on it still. Do any of mine say Mako? This one says Mako, but Mako bought out Duncan. So your bottles um, might say Duncan on it, but they will shortly say Mako as the old stock is circulated from suppliers. But the Duncan one is also food safe. So I should say that so you guys don't think Duncan's not. Duncan is good. Um, so I use the bright gold on the rim of this. It's food safe. I can drink out of this. So if I make tea or coffee in this, I don't heat it up in the microwave because it has mother of pearl luster on the piece itself. Look how lustery it is. And it has the gold on it. So you don't, it is real gold. So it's, it's fancy. All right, any other questions on there before we do the giveaways? So how long does an 08 kiln take to fire? Well, I guess it depends on your kiln and how big it is and how fast of a firing you're doing, right? I mean, you could set your kiln and do a four hour firing if you really want to. Um, I do a preheat of one hour 
for my lusters to make sure they are dry before the actual firing starts. And then I usually do a medium. Now my kiln lets me do a thing called a medium fast fire. So for a luster, I can do a medium fast if I really want to, or just a medium fire. And that usually takes me about eight hours and then it has to cool back down. And the cooling takes 16 to 24 hours in my small kiln. Bigger kilns could take longer. So you're looking at a 24 hour turnaround. Some people do fast fires. They'll start finished in four hours. And by the next day, they're opening it like eight hours after that. So it just depends on your kiln and how you fire. But of course, it's uh, going to be not as long of a firing because it's not as hot as even a bisque fire. So it's going to be a little quicker for you. So that's a good thing, right? Any other thing? If you don't, we did that. Okay. Buttercup and amaryllis are pretty together. They are. I really want to try more with the amaryllis, but I only have the one little sample. I need to put my order in to Clayscapes before that discount ends tonight so I can go get lots of new glazes. Um, you know, we did do the Mako, and if you missed that, go back and watch the other broadcasts for this month because we did share the, a bunch of new Mako glazes, and I've had a bunch of kiln openings with it. So um, this one right here is, oh, let me get my plate. Did I bring my test plate? I didn't bring my Mako test plate with me. Uh, because I don't remember. I do know this one here is Riptide. That came out great. So let's go to, we'll go to camera two. This is the Mako Riptide. Uh, not, not one you'd use for food wear because of the finish. And I, then I put light flux on it. So it ran down it. Isn't that cute? This little planter right here. Um, peppered plum. And what's the other one? Someone will remember. Someone out there. Help me out. <laughs> because I left my sample plate over at the other studio because I can't remember everything. All right, so this one right here has, it's the peppered plum and it has light flux and it's so delicious. I absolutely adore this. It's this purple one right here. Passion flower, thank you. Passion flower also with huh charlie thank you thank you passion flower on top of my wild aster so the purple is my wild aster celadon and then passion flower on top and then the light flux i believe but we did this in a tutorial so we actually glazed this together but it was the beginning of the month so forgive me i can't remember that far back i've been building a new studio how can i remember and then this is peppered plum with light flux and it is so yummy. You don't have to luster these kind of pieces. They're amazing all on their own, but you could do a little luster and it would give it that extra bit of pop. So I did do a test plate with all of the new Mako stoneware glazes. You can go back and watch the tutorial where I actually glazed the, pit, glazed the plate and then we had a kiln opening where I took the plate out of the kiln and you got to see it all. And that was on a flat surface and that's very different than a vertical surface. So then after I did the test plate, I went ahead and tried some of the glazes on vertical surfaces to see how they would melt and run. And I do love the amaryllis. And that's the one we put the luster on. I love the peppered plum. I like the passion flower too. And I really like, it's a very dark, strong colored glaze. So I like pairing it with another lighter color. I think it would look really pretty with a blue as well. So you could really have a lot of fun and get many different looks with this one glaze by pairing it with another glaze under it. So always try combinations of glazes. It's nice to do one color, but two, three colors, it gets really interesting. All right. So I think we're going to do a giveaway. Are you guys ready to see who won? First giveaway in the first giveaway in the new studio. Can the bubble technique be done with stroke and coat? Sure, why not? I, I mean, usually we use under glaze and then you put a glaze on top. You still want a glaze on top of the stroke and coat. The only difference between stroke and coat and under glaze is stroke and coat uh, fluxes and melts like a glaze does. And the under glaze is just made with clay so it doesn't flux at all. So that's your big difference with those products. All right, you ready to do the giveaway? 
you love the Mako colors. I, I have a lot of faves. Um, I, you probably can't see the behind me because the lighting is a little dark, but yeah. All right, am I doing the top one first? The one, wait, wait, I guess I'll, this one first or this one first? Well, if I hold it this way and I flip it up, you see. <laughs> he said, no, don't do it that way. All right, the first winner of our, I got to do something about the glare of my glasses, really. You see that? That's, that's pretty strong. All right, the first winner of the $25 giveaway is Vanessa Steele. Congratulations, Vanessa. You're going to get yourself $25 to buy whatever you want at Clayscapes Pottery. Uh, I mean, you could buy the new Mako colors, or maybe you could get some of the Lusters or Stroke & Co. You know? You will figure it out. Another winner. We got two. Are you ready? I'm just seeing if there's any questions before we get to it. All right. Second winner of the $25 gift certificate is Marsha Crippen. Marsha, congratulations. You get yourself $25 to spend at Clayscapes Pottery. And I have to give a huge shout out to Clayscapes for sponsoring this whole month of Mako awesomeness and all the giveaways they've done this month and that discount that is still good today. So if you need to pick up the Mako glazes, go to Clayscapes Pottery and use that Mako 2023 code and save. It does expire tonight, so I don't want you missing out. After tonight, you got to go, I don't know, either pay without the discount or find it somewhere else. But I, I really, I need to not forget and I need to do it myself because I got to get some Mako glazes. Uh, coming in June, we have De La Design sponsoring the month. I'm really excited for that. So Debbie Dela Cruz is going to join us. Also, I have got a box that came yesterday that I didn't open yet. It's the new Amico Fluxes. Amico sent me all of their new Fluxes to test out and share with you all. And I haven't had a moment to open the box. Can you believe I have all the new Fluxes sitting in a box unopened? I have amazing patience. Can you believe I have such willpower and self-control that I can sit here knowing I have every single one of the new fluxes from Amico and I haven't opened the box yet? Not at all. Didn't even peek. Still sitting on my porch, as a matter of fact. Anybody walk by, they could have gone and got it themselves. No, it's fine. But I am going to be opening that and sharing it with you and glazing with them. I just haven't had a moment to do so with all that's going on here at Clayshare. So next in prime time, we are going to be using Stroke and & Coats and Designer Liner from Mako. And if you remember last year, I believe it was, or maybe the year before, I don't remember. I can't remember if we did this in 21 or 22. We did the lemon plate. We actually, I made two. I made more than two. We did a whole bunch. But the lemon plate class, well, you can go make this. And it's using stroke and coats and designer liners. Well, I have a couple more suggestions and ideas for you all using stroke and coats and designer liners. So we're going to do that in the primetime class next, only for the premium members of Clayshare. That's right, just for you guys. And if you're not a premium member yet, you can go sign up. You go to clayshare.com and sign up as a member, or you can go to wherever you get your apps from and download the Clayshare app and watch there. The beautiful thing about that is you can watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, wherever you watch any of your favorite streaming networks, you can watch Clayshare. You can watch us on the go, and premium members can watch all of our classes as many times as they want, forever and ever and ever, as long as they're a premium member. You guys get to watch them. So it's really great. Any questions before we go? Let's see if we got anything from you all. You got the Celadons, Christine. Oh my gosh. And yours are unopened too. You'll get to them. So I don't have time. I know, Susan. I will, I will get the fluxes. Actually, that's uh, on my list. I was supposed to do it today, but it looks like that's tomorrow's list. But I'll get it done. It'll happen. What glazes are on the green cup to my left? This green cup here? So these are Amico's, and it was the new glazes that came out in 2019 or 2020. And I can't remember them without having the bottles in front of me. And I don't have all my glazes here. So um, what were the ones they did? They had River Rock that same year. I'll, I'll find out and I'll let you know. But they were Amico 
and they're really pretty, aren't they? Uh, somebody will know out there. But since we just moved everything to the studio, I don't have my, all my resources. Alrighty. You're interested in seeing the flux. Me too. I'm excited to see them. I'm excited to put them on pots and glaze with them. So I'll be doing that over the next few days and I'll share my results with everybody. And I know a few other people out there, Frank, that's you. I know he got them too and can't wait to try them. So, you know, go ahead, Frank, use your, use your fluxes. He was so sweet. He didn't want to do his an unboxing or share his until I mentioned I had mine because he's the best. All right, guys. Uh, did it, can you get a firing schedule, not just cone? Uh, like I said, for the lusters, I do a one hour preheat because I just put it on. I usually do a medium speed, medium to medium fast, which is about eight hour firing and no hold at the end. That's it. That's it for me. That's my schedule. But you could do something different if it works for you. Basically the same as a glaze firing is what I do, except the temperature's a little lower. Well, quite a bit lower. So that's all and no hold. All right, everybody, that's all we got tonight. Next Wednesday, we'll be back with Clay Share Live. It is June next Wednesday. So we will maybe have Debbie here joining us. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be me. I don't know either. You're just going to have to wait and see what happens and come back next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>